They risked their lives for Ukraine, and now they can't go home. Such is the plight of an estimated 200 foreigners who have fought in Ukraine alongside the country's armed forces against Russian-backed militants. These men and women are largely from Belarus and Russia. We'll delve deeper into their story with the help of Maria Antonova, writing for Foreign Policy. She met one fighter named Rudolf. She tells his story. Now, months after he left the fighting, Rudolf is stuck in Kiev, living on friends' couches. He still wears fatigues with a pre-Soviet red and white Belarusian flag patch sewed onto the sleeve. He is desperately trying to legalize his new Ukrainian life. The 90-day visa-less stay that Ukraine allows Russians and Belarusians has long expired, and his participation in the Donbass battalion has been leaked to the Belarusian KGB, a close ally of Moscow. He can't go home. Antonova tells us that there is legislation in the works from Ukraine which should simplify the process of granting citizenship to people who have fought for the country. But still, nothing is straightforward. She writes, even if the bills which have floated around Parliament for months are passed, they are not going to help those whose legal stay in the country has already run out. Their heroism on the front lines last year has no legal weight in the face of migration officials doing their jobs. Foreign nationals coming to Ukraine were barred from fighting with the country's military. That means that if they came to do battle with the Russian-backed insurgents, they had to do so as part of unofficial formations, a number of which are known for being on the far right of the political spectrum. But, as Antonova tells us, it's not just ideology that brought fighters to far-right groups. Some told me that they ended up joining right sector simply because it waived the bureaucracy of the other battalions for people who wanted to join the combat. They also rejected allegations that they were mercenaries. So, the foreign men and women who fought for Ukraine seem to be stuck in no man's land. Ukraine won't accept them and they can't return home. They feel a serious sense of injustice after what they've sacrificed. As Antonova tells us, the foreigners now fear that they are becoming victims of a burgeoning political struggle between the battalions and government in Kiev that aspires to join the EU and wants to shed any association with the far-right white supremacist ideology, even if the far-right groups helped the undisciplined Ukrainian army in its weakest moments last year. For the Russians and Belarusians in Ukraine who fought for the country, it's a seemingly impossible situation. On the one hand, if they go home, they face jail. On the other hand, the Ukrainian government refuses to legalize their status. Many say this is hypocritical. When the foreigners came to Ukraine, the government welcomed their contribution, but now will not give them what they deserve or need. That's all we have time for today. Join us again tomorrow for another press review. In Kiev, this is Ukraine Today.